Hey, it's Rob from Big Green Egg here to show you how to cook pizza on your Big Green Egg. And I know if you ask anybody, you're got, probably gonna get 10 different answers. And that's okay because that's what I'm here to tell you today that there is every possibility you can imagine when cooking a pizza on the Big Green Egg from high temperatures to low temperatures. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. But first, let's get started by showing you the setup that you're gonna need for your Big Green Egg. So first I'm gonna start off with the Big Green Egg Convector. And I have it here in the Big Green Egg Convector Basket, which is part of the Expander Kit. So you can check that out. You can also use Half Moon Stones in here if you wanted to, or you can just use your convector in the egg. But today, since I have the basket and the convector, that's how I'm gonna show you how to use it. So the next thing you're gonna need is your cooking grid. And the cooking grid goes right on top. And then you're gonna need a baking stone and your baking stone is going to go on top of your grid. Now, some people like to get their baking stone a little bit higher in the dome when cooking a pizza, and that's okay too. You can use the top part of the expander kit, and that can sit on there, or you can uh, ball up some aluminum foil and stick that under here so the uh, pizza stone is a little bit raised up in the dome. You can also use, I've seen guys use bricks, things like that, but basically this is your setup no matter how you're going to do it. We also have the deep dish baking stone, um, which can go on here as well. You don't have to have a stone when you're using this, but it's nice to have uh, when you're doing some deep dish pizzas or some types of casseroles as well. But we're not gonna use that today. We're just gonna show you how to use a regular pizza. But if you notice, my pizza stone's a little dirty here. So we have this new brush that we have that you can just kind of brush it off, help clean it up. But before we get started, we're going to get this on the egg. Right now I'm cooking it about 450 degrees, but uh, today I'm going to put this in because you want this stone to heat up as well. You don't want to put this in and then throw your pizza on there. You're never going to get the cooking correctly. Your bottom is going to be undone when your top's going to be done and vice versa. If you let this thing sit in there for too long, this, especially at high temperatures, you're going to cook the bottom of your pizza before the top. So right now, before we get our ingredients out here, we're going to set this right inside the egg just like that and let this heat up and we'll get our ingredients out here in a second. All right, now that our stone is preheating on the egg, we're again, we're at 450, but once you put the stone in, the temperature will drop down a little bit. Let it get back up to 450. You'll know your stone is up at that temperature as well if it's been in there for about 10, 15 minutes. But right now we're gonna start on our dough. And right now I'm going to uh, just put some flour down onto this dough mat here. And we're gonna flatten this dough out to get ready to make our pizza. And you always wanna start in the middle and start working your way out. Now there are different types of doughs that you have. And this one was store-bought, so I know this one's gonna come with a little more sugar content in it. And you're just gonna keep working this out because the difference is you have your regular flour, all-purpose flour, then you have your zero and your double zero. And uh, you wanna make sure, if you can, go ahead and get the double zero. It's gonna make for a great dough if you're making your dough yourself. If not, it's okay. You can go and buy the store-bought, that's great. You can literally go buy one out of the freezer and still cook it on the egg, and it'll even taste better than it does when you put it in your oven. So those are some of the options you have. As you can see, I'm just trying to get this rounded out here and flatten it. I don't use a rolling pin, but you can, and that's fine. Um, but the difference is with the doughs that are store bought, like at a, 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 a grocery store, you're going to want to make sure that you are cooking at the 400 degrees, the 450, somewhere in there, uh, because it has a sugar count in there. It's going to burn faster, unlike your other doughs that are bought from a, a pizza place, uh, one of your favorite pizza joints. You can go there. They usually sell their doughs as well. Uh, but we're just going to make this one, again, big enough to fit but not go all the way to the edge of this pizza stone because you don't want the edges to burn. And you just wanna go ahead and put it on your fist and you can spin it around just like this. That'll help it. I do spin these pizzas. I will toss them up and sit some outside 
And if I screw up, I don't want to do it on camera. But uh, as you can imagine, you can have a lot of fun. The kids can do this uh, at home with you. The whole family can get out there. And again, you can make anything you want. This can be just a cheese pizza. You can put your special toppings on there, whether you want mushrooms, tomatoes, and I'm gonna give you some tips on that as well. So I have some tomatoes out here, and I'm gonna grab some of this paper towel, because what you wanna do with your tomatoes and any vegetables that have any moisture in them, you're gonna to wanna to put them out and lay them down in a paper towel, and then fold it over, you can see the moisture is already coming out of it. That's what you want. If you have some green peppers and you want to get some of the moisture out of them, you can cook those. Same with the onions, you can do that as well. But today, we're just going to make our pizza pretty simple. Probably a little margarita pizza and be done with it. This dough is just about finished. And then we'll start putting on toppings and we'll get this loaded on. Now, there are a couple things when you're getting ready to put your dough onto a pizza peel. I'm going to show you that real quick as well. So when you have your pizza peel, uh, you can either do one of two things. Uh, you can get some cornmeal and lay the cornmeal on your pizza peel like this, which I'm not a big fan of cornmeal. I automatically taste it whenever it's in there. And you can do that and then put your pizza dough right on top of that. We're not gonna do that today. I'm gonna show you some other options with parchment paper and even a screen. So this is the screen I'm talking about right here. You can literally put the pizza right on here and cook it that way and just throw that on the pizza stone. That's one way you can do it. The other way is putting your pizza on top of parchment paper, which I found these, which are perfectly round, fit the stones perfect, whether it's a large or XL. Uh, for the mediums or small ones, you, have to, you do have to cut them out a little bit because they will hang over the edge. But this is what we're gonna do today to make it very simple. And the reason sometimes I use the parchment paper or I buy multiple screens is if I'm doing a bunch of pizzas at once. Today, we're just doing the one, so you don't have to do all that. But what that does is, it gives you the ability to stretch out all your dough and then put them on the screens and the parchment paper and then everybody can fill their toppings that they want and put on there. So we're gonna build this pizza up here today. I'm actually gonna lay my parchment paper down underneath this. I'm gonna stretch out just a little bit more. And then we're gonna put some sauce on there. And you don't want to over sauce your pizza. I always see people putting a ton of sauce on there. You don't have to do that. And we have even seen some of the commercials nowadays that have the sauce going on after that. I haven't tried that, but it looks fantastic. But I don't ever over sauce. And sometimes I will drizzle. Uh, me personally, I'll drizzle some olive oil on here and then throw a little, uh, little basil and um, some oregano and just a little seasoning like that on there. But today, we're just gonna make this simple to show you how to make a pizza on the egg. And again, I'm checking on my stone. We're still at about 400 degrees. I want it to come up a little bit higher. And I always start from the middle. Put your sauce on there and just from the inside out, start working your way around. And this is great because not only do, can you do sauce, you can do pestos, you can do an olive oil based. Um, aioli if you'd like. Today we're just going to do a light sauce. You can hear the dogs in the background, they're pretty excited. Um, they're getting to have some pizza today. We're just going to do some, I think we'll do some tomatoes on there. I'll throw some uh, mozzarella. So I've been letting these, let get the, some of the moisture out of them. So you can see that the moisture is out. We're just going to lay these on top. I'm going to put a couple more on here too to let the moisture come out of those. Wrap it up. That's why you bring multiple paper towels out here. Then we're going to put some cheese on there as well. I'm just going to do the sides that we have the tomatoes on. And I also put some basil on here, which I'll get here in a second. All right, let me go ahead and get the basil. I had it down here set it up here and I'm just going to take a few leaves right off the plant here 
we're gonna put them on our pizza. And again, this is what I'm cooking today. Sometimes I like pepperoni. It's whatever you want, you can cook. And again, when you ask somebody, you ask 10 different people, you're gonna get 10 different answers on how to cook the egg. My best advice to you is start at about 425, 450 range. That's a good beginner's start when you're working with pizzas. Then you can go up a little bit higher than that and, and try to experiment a little bit on different things, especially when you start working and making your own dough with the double zero dough, you'll be get, able to go with those higher temperatures. But today we're going to show you the, the nice and easy way to do this pizza. I'm just going to finish putting on the cheese, get more of the basil on there. And again, I don't like to put too much basil on there in the beginning because um, I don't want it to crisp up and overcook. And sometimes you get that. So we'll cut up a little bit of this afterwards and just sprinkle it on top. All right, this looks done and ready to go. And again, if I was doing this with no parchment paper, I would use the cornmeal on here. But since we got the parchment paper, literally go up underneath. And now we're ready to put our pizza on our egg and our stone. And as you can see, it's at 450. We're just gonna burp the egg. I'm gonna slide this in with the peel. I'm gonna center it on the stone, and then you're gonna pull your peel back out. All right, we're gonna let that cook for 10, 15 minutes. We'll come back in and check on it. All right, we checked the pizza at about the 10 minute mark. We're about 22 minutes in, so we're gonna take the pizza off. It's ready to go. You're just gonna burp your egg grab our pizza peel and we kept the parchment paper on there you can take that off at any point but i'm going to pull it off here and we've uh, throughout the cook we've also spun the pizza in the egg shut the dome here we're going to use our ultimate pizza wheel and we're going to cut the pizza here and this thing's great because you can keep it in your hand nice and sturdy but this thing i got to hold a little bit it's on a lazy susan so we're going to cut the pizza up and you just want to jab the edge Go across. Oh man, look how crispy that is. That crunchiness, that sound. The pizza looks absolutely amazing. And we're going to do this. I'm going to go one more time because we got some friends over that we're feeding today. And that, my friends, is exactly how you cook a pizza on the big green egg.